Welcome to Off the Walls. I am your host, Richard Holdridge. Happy to be here at El Carrizo Restaurant. We are early in the National Indoor Soccer League season, and it's a good night to be a Columbus Rapids fan. I'm here with the women's team head coach, head coach Miguel Galindo. Coach, great having you on the show. No, thanks for having me. And I must say, I'm excited. We've had three games already on the season. The Rapids looking great. You picked up your first victory Friday night. I have to tell you, that was one of the most exciting games I've ever called. It went to penalty kicks. The Columbus Rapids win. And after starting the year 0-2, you bounce back and you get your first victory of the season. However, you did lose to the Memphis Americans. But it was in overtime. It was one of those games that could have went either way. But, Coach, what adjustments did you make from that picking up that victory in Memphis? And what did you tell your team to mentally prepare them to face the Memphis Americans in a back-to-back? Uh, you know, we, we have this process in our, in our training, in our periodization, where um, we're starting one way and we keep building, keep building. Uh, I think one of the big factors was uh, the night before training, that first game. Um, I like to, or I've learned that, you know, make it lighthearted, fun, take the pressure away, just have a, a, a good session. You're still working on what you need to work on, but um, it took, to me, it took a lot of the pressure off of, hey, we're back at home again. We're playing the Memphis Americans. It wasn't pretty the first time we went to, to play them, but I knew and they knew that, hey, what we've been working on is going to come to fruition. And um, I think not only the victory, but playing them back to back, we made a statement and we're going to continue to make statements. And just as much as the ladies are excited, I'm excited. Um, I know um, playing back to back within less than 24 hours takes a toll on your body. Um, I know they were super excited after the win. Uh, I'm sure their mindset was like, hey, let's celebrate. But before we left that, that night, Friday, I said, leave all the emotions here in the arena. When you leave, reset the mindset because we, we have another go at them the next day. And they brought, I want to say, more players with them to play against us. Um, so I knew that they would have some fresh legs, but it still wasn't going to take away from our play style. You had an early goal by Martina Necrasis, and you were down 3-1 to one to Memphis. One thing that was impressive is you kept their leading goal scorer, Ashlyn Jones, scoreless. Brittany Conway gets that goal, and then Casey Hall gets the goal to tie it up, and then it goes to penalty kicks. Your goalie was just stopping those penalties. It's amazing. Just the adrenaline, your, your team excited, and really the fans at the Civic Center excited for your team, finally getting that victory. How proud are you that your team picks up the first victory of the season in front of the crowd at the Civic Center and – Taking on the Memphis Americans, a team that beat you 10-2, to 2, consider one of the best teams in the league, and you guys pick up the victory. Um, honestly, it's, it's a, collective, a collective win. I'm proud of their efforts. Obviously, they're the ones putting their bodies on the line, going to trainings, aching, um, you know, because the indoor game is and can be brutal because of the surface you play on. So, um, to me, that victory was not only for – for them, but our community, those within the organization. I mean, Coach Eddie and I are super, um, I mean, we talk on the regular about yeah. tactics, about what each team is doing. We bounce ideas off. Um, so, you know, proud, yes, but there's still a lot of work to do. Um, I soaked in that moment. I walked around the arena after the game, and then I had to reset my mind because um, I knew the next day was, was going to be another battle. Yeah, the team did battle in that next game, fought hard, however, lost to the Memphis Americans in overtime. But you had a lot of newcomers on the team that got a lot of minutes playing, including Kalia Utsi, who did score a goal in that second game. Also, Bree Canty had a big role, Ariel Jones. How did the new players that just signed this week get involved, and how did they gel with the team that's already been formed so far this season? So I think when 
having them come out to our training sessions for a tryout, the most important thing for me is when I look at a player, how well are they fitting in our system? Um, because it's a system, again, and I'll say it, and it's, it's not a bragging or I'm puffing out my chest, but studying this game, there are teams in the league that are not trying to play the style that we're trying to play. Um, so it's... Uh, um, it's um, very, it was very, I was very excited and happy to see that simply because um, they, they joined that week of in training sessions. And then, you know, when it's your first time playing with a team, your question is, or in their minds is, how am I going to perform? And they came out like they'd been part of the team from the very beginning. Now, you have a tough road ahead. Because Sunday, you have to travel up to Fayetteville, North Carolina to take on the Fury up at the Crown Complex. Then you got to turn around and play the Rome Gladiators on Monday. How are you preparing your team for the mental toughness of making that bus trip to Fayetteville and then coming back home and getting prepared for that game against Rome? Um, I think one of the main things I'm going to have to do is um, tweak my roster around a little bit. Um, some that will travel on Sunday may not play Monday. I haven't made that decision yet. But again, we're facing a less than or about 24 hour turnaround and a long, a long drive to play our second game. So um, that is something that's at the back of my mind. Now you've played Fayetteville before here at the Columbus Civic Center, lost five to three, have yet to face Rome. Rome has the leading goal scorer in the NISL, Carly Banks. She's got seven goals on the year. Is that cross your mind at all that you know that that's a player that you're going to have to spot on, get somebody on defense on her because she can score goals? There's an interesting story with Carly Banks. Uh, I don't know her on a personal level, but when we were both coaching youth club at AFC Lightning, we got to meet each other. I got to see her work. So um, I'm not going to say I picked up on a few things. I'm not going to I'm not going to expose that secret, but uh, I've studied film and, and I've seen how they play. And, you know, we're, we're going to have a plan in place and, you know, we'll go from there. All right. Good luck to the rest of the season, coach. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. That is head coach Miguel Galindo of the women's team. We'll be back for a quick commercial break here on Off the Walls. It seems like every provider says they have fast, reliable Internet. Beam backs it up with real reviews from satisfied customers. So you can believe it when we say you'll get reliable internet speeds at a great value. Because we've been here for more than 50 years, committed to improving the way our community connects. Let us prove it to you. Switch now and we'll pay up to $200 to get you out of your contract. Dependable, affordable, local. You'll be amazed with Beam. Give us a call and find out why today. Welcome back to Off the Walls. I am Richard Holdridge, the play-by-play -play announcer for the Columbus Rapids. I am here with the Columbus Rapids women's team goalie, Bria Riancho. Bria, great having you on the show. Thank you for having me. We are excited that you are on the team making those huge stops. You are the real re the re reason why the Rapids picked up their first victory. Some of those stops were incredible. And I really enjoy calling you on the radio, on the TV broadcast up in YouTube, and just seeing you mentally prepared at goalie, how do you prepare yourself to make those critical stops during the most anticipated times in the game where, where everything's on the line, especially against a team like Memphis, who has goal scorers? Uh, I don't think there's really anything I can do to mentally prepare except just be as focused as possible and that just comes with the years of soccer that I've grown up playing. Now, I've been, I've been told by several teams in the league, uh, they've seen you at goalie. I mean, you, did, you gave up the five goals against Fayetteville, but you've seen a, an improvement in this team, especially when you had to turn around and play the back-to-back -back in that second game on Saturday. And you played Memphis tough, lost in overtime, but you were still 
outstanding at goalie, and you kept your team in the game. So what do you tell your teammates when you're out there competing and when you're working together as a team, what do you try to give them as far as advice to make sure that you keep the team in the game? Uh, well, we did go down 3-1, and at halftime we were just we just came together and we were like we need to slow the game down, keep composure, and play how we know how to play. And that just led to our goals coming quick in the second half, and just went from there. Now you, you got to talk about that the penalty kick situation because that's the first time in NISL history that a game has gone to penalty kicks. Now Casey Hall gets that first goal, and then their leading goal scorer Ashlyn Jones. That stop that you did on Ashlyn Jones was amazing. You anticipated it at the right moment, the adrenaline going through your mind, anticipating that shot. Because it's not easy in penalty kicks when it comes to indoor soccer. is kind of like hockey because they can dribble the ball first. So she can make a couple of moves and then take her shot. So what was going through your mind when you were making that save? Uh, leading up to it, I just knew that I had to get the timing and positioning right to be able to stop it. And then, of course, they got into a situation where you stopped all three shots, which was huge because all they had to do was get one, and then you guys would have been tied, and we'd go on to another series of penalty kicks. But you were able to stop that third shot. Just the crowd and the team excited. I was excited. I, you know, was screaming Rapids win, and it was one of the most exciting games I've ever called in, in my history of broadcasting. And so I really do appreciate what you guys have done so far. And I know it's just the beginning, but what are you looking forward to this season? Making that trip up to Fayetteville and then coming back on, on Monday to take on the Rome Gladiators at the Civic Center. I think we're ready. I think we still have a lot of room for improvement and we continue to grow as a team each game. And we just keep getting better and better. So I can't wait to see what we can add up to. Yeah, we're excited about this season. We really are excited to see you at goalie for the Columbus Rapids. Thank you for being on the show. That is Bria Riancho, the goalkeeper for your Columbus Rapids women's team. We'll be back with a quick commercial break. Thank you for joining us on Off the Walls. It's a new year, and what better way to stay connected than with Beam Internet? Now that's definitely a resolution worth keeping. Don't spend 2022 waiting for pages and videos to load. Get 250 megabits of internet speed for only $29.95 when you bundle with our Digital Advantage TV. No data caps, all your favorite channels, and no wasting the year away with slow internet. Call us today and start the new year off right with fast, reliable internet with Beam. Welcome back to Off the Walls. I am your host, Richard Holdridge. I am joined via Zoom call by Columbus Rapids defenseman, Ethan Allure. Ethan, great having you on the show. Thank you for having me. And I know you can't make it to El Carrizo restaurant, uh, but I just want to talk about the job that you did defensively on Jordy Jordovich, who's considered one of the best players in the NI NISL. Seven goals on the season. Look, I know... He's got 11 total. He's had seven goals against the Rapids. I know he scored three goals in that second game. Two of them were on set pieces. One was on a fluke play in overtime when he was coming off a line change and scored the goal. But coach had an assignment for you to spot Jordy Jordovich, and you did a phenomenal job. What was going through your mind when you had the assignment to guard the best player in the NISL. You know, obviously with, with Coach Eddie, after the, the first two games we played them, we knew that, you know, he'd be their target man, you know, their danger man. And uh, in the talk, we, we knew he had a, you know, a bigger build, and we we just decided that we needed to kind of put someone on him, obviously. And because obviously you have to be aware of where he is at all times on the field. I mean, he really is a danger man. So going going into the game, you know, uh, you know, playing college ball, it, it's, it's – 
you, I've played against players kind of like his size. And uh, I just, you know, in my head, I'm, I'm always confident going into a game like that. So uh, playing against him, I knew that I, I have the ability to, you know, play with him and especially, you know, kind of shut him down. You know, unfortunately, he got those those three goals, which, you know, uh, congratulations to him, I guess. But, uh, you know, just playing against him, it, it's it's a physical game, obviously, but I was, in my mind, I was, I was ready for it. Now, you were playing the Memphis Americans on a back-to-back, -back, a Friday night and a Saturday night. I saw a much bigger improvement. You lost to the Memphis Americans 10-0 in that first game. However, you came out in that second game, and Memphis – defeated you in overtime. I saw just an amazing improvement, especially on the defense, thanks to your efforts on Jordy, but also overall defensively in that game, you made a lot of plays down in the zone to keep the ball out of the net. And so how do you mentally prepare yourself to commit to defense? So, you know, uh, you know, with our goal differential going into that game, it was it was really bad. Obviously, uh, we had to fix a lot of things. But you know, as the players and with Coach Eddie, uh, we kind of we kind of got our plan in, and and we sat down for a little bit, and you know, we had like a little group chat. And we were talking about it, and uh, we just knew we had to step up. Uh, you know, we had to step up to a level that our that our fans wanted us to. You know, to perform a lot better. Um, so going into that game, like the whole thing was just. We got to do better than, than, than 10 nothing, than 6 nothing. Uh, defensively, uh, our big game plan was obviously shutting down George. Uh, it's hard to pronounce his name sometimes, but uh, shutting down number 33. And then uh, obviously with Corey, Corey's a really good player, very experienced. Uh, we knew we had to, you know, kind of shut him down a little bit too. But uh, defensively, we knew we had to do a lot better, uh, focus a lot more, talk a lot more, communicate a lot more. Uh, the big focus for that game was just being, being more of a team, being more together as one unit rather than, you know, six individual players on the field trying to do everything themselves. And, and I think it really helped us out, obviously, getting, getting a better result. Uh, I think the biggest thing for us, though, is going to be, you know, we're really happy with the progress that we made in that game. You know, obviously, you know, finally putting some goals in the back of the net and, you know, uh, defensively holding it down a little bit better. So we're really happy with the progress that we've, that, that we've been making, but uh, we're still not happy with it. Now, you're one of the four players on the Columbus Rapids men's team that's on an amateur contract. You play collegiate soccer at Point University, which is up the road in West Point, Georgia. It's an NAIA school. I'm very familiar with the Point Skyhawks, as I'm very familiar with the NAIA. So having that experience playing the outdoor game and still playing at the collegiate level and transitioning it to the indoor game, what are you focused on and how do you mentally prepare for a game that, in my opinion, is completely different from the outdoor game? And I know that you know that as well, Ethan, but how do you prepare to get ready from the outdoor game to the indoor game? Um, playing with point, uh, there's a lot of different uh, – we have a lot of international players playing on our team, uh, mostly from, from Spanish-speaking countries like Madrid and from Argentina. But um, I think a big thing that helped me was the different play styles that I played with while at point. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, the, the Spanish style is a lot, a lot quicker, a lot, you know, one touch, two touch, you know, moving around. So I think that translated into the indoor game a lot, a lot better than I thought it would. Um, but just in, in the season, I think the biggest thing was also being in shape. Uh, I, it, it, the indoor game is very, very tiring. So I think the mentally, mentally, it's a lot more physical though. Uh, like in, in a outdoor soccer game, I would say, you know, mentally, I'm not too, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant at times to get stuck into a tackle, you know, cause you don't want to give a foul, get a yellow, but in the indoor game, obviously it's a lot more physical, you know, you have the walls and, and people, I mean, People are grabbing, pushing, shoving, scratching all over the place in the indoor game. So it's it's a lot more physical than the outdoor game. And I think that's a big part mentally that I had to get used to. Thank you, Ethan. And good luck on Sunday against the Fayetteville Fury. And we'll see you back at the Columbus Civic Center on Monday as your team will take on the Rome Gladiators. Let's go, Ethan! All right, that is Columbus Rapids defenseman Ethan Allure. And we are going to be taking a quick commercial break. You're listening to Off the Walls with Richard Holdridge. Back in a little few. Some things are too good to be true. 
Just ask anyone who got the other guy's fast internet and ended up with speeds that don't deliver. The truth is, beaming is believing when it comes to all things internet. We're constantly increasing speeds that really live up to our promise, magnifying Wi-Fi connections and making our network even more reliable. Ask thousands of your happy neighbors and you just might become a beam lever too. Switch today. You'll be amazed with local service you can believe in from Beam. Welcome back to Off the Walls. I am your host, Richard Holdridge. I'm here with the men's team coach of the Columbus Rapids, Coach Eddie Miranda. Coach Eddie, great having you back on the show. Thank you, sir. How have you been? I've been great. Good, good, good. I tell you, I was excited, especially after a great weekend of soccer. The word is getting around about the Columbus Rapids. I think we're starting to build our fan base up. You were taking on the Memphis Americans, the most popular team in the league, if not the best team in the league. They've had the tradition. They've had the owner, who's also the president of the league, head coach Corey Adamson, who has years of experience. I know it was tough that first game, losing 10 nothing. Peter Sleeway is just, what can you say about him? He's, he's a goalie that has so much experience playing indoor soccer. You had some good looks. I thought Daniel Duran had some good, look, good looks. Clayton Adams, he's due for a goal. I, I honestly feel that Clayton Adams has had some shots that should have gone in. But I want to transition to that second game because I feel that your team improved from that first game to the second game where you lost to Memphis 5-4. to four. First of all, your goalie, Freddie Zamudio, what a performance he had. What are your thoughts about Freddie and the job he did at goalie? Oh, oh man. Again, where, where do I begin? Um... You know, talking about talking about Freddie and his consistency and goals so far. Um, you know, he has a he just has a knack for it. You know, he has. Um, you know, not only is he good as a shot stopper, but he's also you know he's he's pretty solid with his feet as well. And uh, but he came up with some incredible saves. You know, so and uh, he he came up big. So um, and you know even for the uh, even for the result on on Friday. You know, it was even though it was a really tough loss loss for us. Um, he had some, he had a, he still had a solid performance that night as well. So, but but Saturday, you know, you can see the pieces coming together, and uh, and yeah, it starts with uh, having Freddie back there. So really proud of him, and um, I just see him progressing as the season continues. So, and I was very impressed with Braden Wood. He had two goals. One of them was an own goal by Memphis, but you give him the credit for the goal. He had two goals. Daniel Duran had a goal, and also Neela Torcelli got a goal too and he's a newcomer to this team but this team is coming together the team is gelling and I'm starting to see some improvements how do you motivate your team to go from one game to the next especially playing on a back-to-back because -back? that is tough having to play on a back-to-back -back, even though you don't have to travel but you made the difference I know Memphis had a new goalie in there but still he's pretty solid but you you took Memphis on the brinks of winning that game however unfortunately Memphis did win in an overtime Jordy Jordovich scores the game winner. It was kind of on a fluke play. It was a quick line change. He jumps out and just scores the winning goal. But what a job that Ethan Allure did defensively. What did you tell Ethan when it comes to defending Jordy Jordovich? Um, you know, it's uh, you know, fair, fair play to, to Memphis. You know, they um, I mean, it's a, it's a well-managed group. I think, you know, there's talent across the board. But uh, you know, Jordy's uh he's he's talented, you know, he's a he's a tough player to deal with. Um, you know, we knew we going into to both games, you know, we realized, okay, obviously the plan is to minimize the uh, <laughs> minimize the um the the how do how do you say this? The um the threat. So for him, for Ethan, it was very it was difficult for Ethan at first to understand his role as far as shutting down Jordy. But eventually he got into a rhythm and especially Saturday, he really showed that. He showed that, he showed the tenacity, he showed that drive, he showed that uh, that physicality that was needed to defend a player of that quality. So, and, and we knew, you know, even after the first match, we knew it was a dangerous, he was a dangerous player. You know, so fair play to him, you know, so um, we know every time we play Memphis, we know we're going to have our hands full with uh, with Jordy, but we just got to continue to play our game, get more and more physical and, um, and just be positive about it, you know, and, and make sure that we execute our roles. So 
Now, you made some adjustments in that second game. You started Stephen McIntosh, who normally plays defense. You moved him over to forward. What was going through your mind when you were making that adjustment for Steven to play forward in that second game? Um, just change it up a bit. You know, throw something different at the, uh, the, the, the opponent. You know, give them a different look. Um, you know, it's something that we've worked on in training. You know, providing, having him as that target player for the evening and, uh, and testing it out. You know, um, soccer is a, is a game of, of taking chances. you got to take risk. You know, that's, that's where the entertainment value comes from. So, you know, you, you have to, and I always tell my guys, they have to enjoy the moment. So regardless if they, if they are playing more of an advanced role on the field or they have to drop back a bit, they need to just enjoy it, you know, and, um, and, and of course, execute in that position. So, and he had some chances, he had opportunities, but unfortunately it didn't fall for him um, either, either, either Friday or Saturday. So, but I know it's coming, so he just needs to keep on, uh, you know, keep on trucking and he'll be all right. And you have a tough road ahead. You got to travel up to Fayetteville, North Carolina. You'll take on the Fayetteville Fury at the Crown Complex on Sunday. Then you got to turn around and play the Grown Gladiators on Monday, a team that you have not faced yet, which that is Martin Luther King Day. And it's also kids get in free at the Columbus Civic Center. And they also moved the game time to 3.30. So we should have a lot of kids out there, a lot of fans. It's going to be great for the Rapids to see that. But let's talk about Fayetteville because you lost 11-1. to I know that there's going to be some adjustments that you're going to make in that game to, to make sure that you have a chance to win. Because if anything about the National Indoor Soccer League is any team can beat anybody on any given day. But as you take on Fayetteville, what is the adjustments that you're going to make to come back to take on Rome, a team that you guys have not faced yet. And uh, what have you heard about the Rome Gladiators and the strength of their team? Well, I think um, as far as approaching Fayetteville goes, the idea is we know that we're playing with 12 that day. So, um, and we know that they have 14. So we have to be very smart about our rotations. We have to be very smart about um, just controlling the game, not chasing too much. Um, attacking as a unit, but defending as a unit as well. So, um, you know, it's 60 minutes that we have to go out there and, and give it everything. So there's really, there's no game, whether it's the first match of the season or it's the last, there's no game where you can really rest and say, oh, it's okay, we'll recover after this. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're in a bit of a hole right now, you know, being going four. So obviously every game we play, we want to get the result. Um, is it possible on Sunday? Absolutely. You know, with all due respect to Fayetteville, that's a good group. They showed a lot of talent. They play well. They're well managed. Um, but I know going into Sunday's game again, you know, making that adjustment and in, in, in how we approach them, you know, after studying film and observing their players and their movement off the ball, we just have to be a little bit more uh, intense going into Sunday's game. Um, very similar to how to, to the intensity of, uh, of the 5-4 result against uh, Memphis. So even though we came out um, on the wrong end of it for us, it was, still, um, it was still a much different performance for our guys, and I was super proud of them. So if we, if we want any chance against any team, we have to have a, a, a high level of intensity every time we step on the field. So, but as far as going into Monday's game, we know that, again, it's a, it's a team that we're going to battle. They haven't seen us, uh, we haven't seen them, so they know that and we know that that every team has played against each other so far. I know it's only four teams, but Memphis has played against, um, you know, they've, well, they've played against Rome, so, you know, and, and we played against Memphis, obviously, so, and we know that the Fayetteville-Memphis game was a, sorry, the Memphis, um, the Memphis-Rome game was an intense battle. So, and we know that we're going to have to, again, match that intensity come Monday. So, not a lot of time to rest. We just have to be, we have to not only be physically ready, but mentally ready as well. So, and that's really the only way we can get a result. So, well, good luck Sunday against Fayetteville. We'll yes, see you back at the Civic Center Monday against the Rome Gladiators. Looking forward to calling that game. And best of luck to the rest of the season, Coach. Awesome. Thank you, Richard. All yes, right. Sir. Thank you. That is head coach Eddie Miranda head coach of the men's team for your Columbus Rapids. Thank you for watching Off the Walls. Don't forget that our next episode will air January 24th, where we will recap the season and preview the next upcoming games. 
Hope that everybody has a great night and we will see you next time. Bye everybody.